Hello, today I thought I'd film a different sort of video that I've never filmed before and that is my auto buy authors which means it's the authors that I would just buy automatically pretty much whatever they write I will buy any of their books or in some cases most likely it's a little bit more than I thought so there's quite a few but I'm just going to tell you a little bit of what I like about the author which books I've read maybe a little bit about them just very briefly because there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven authors and i thought it was going to be only five when i started pulling them together but then realized it's a lot more than i thought so there's a lot to go through so i don't want this video to be a very long one so i'm just gonna be as brief as possible just to say which books i have read by the author which ones i haven't maybe briefly what i thought of them and what i like about the author i'm just gonna go through it in the stacks as they are in here. So the first one I've got here is actually Blake Crouch. I, I'm i confident almost to say that he's an autobi author even though I know he's written a lot of books. I haven't read too many by him but I've read a few and I've got two on my TBR. I believe I've read five books by the author and I think it all pretty much started with Dark Matter. I think that's the first one I read. And they're all sci-fi-ish, mostly. Dark Matter was really a really damn good book, mind-blowing. It was great. And I feel like this one, Recursion, is very similar in vibes with this one. In fact, I think they're really too similar to the point that I wouldn't remember. No, actually, I think I remember this one a lot more. And I do recommend this book to many people who just want to get into reading because this was so engrossing and so really captivating and like a massive page turner. This one was good as well. And I also read the, I think the Pines trilogy by the author, starting with Pines, then Wayward and then The Last Town. I really, really enjoyed these books. The third one was definitely my favourite. And I would say it is sci-fi, but also like dystopian side. It was really good. And it was a little bit creepy as well, by the way. So it's, yeah, like a creepy sci-fi dystopian type of thing. So these are the five that I have read. The two on my TBR that I have got and have not read yet, obviously. I've got Upgrade here, and it's a signed copy, by the way. I've had it since it came out, which was now a little while ago. Signature. This one came out in 2022 and I'm pretty sure I maybe even pre-ordered it so I, do, I really do need to get back into his books but yes that's another sci-fi and I also have I think it's a reprint but it's Abandon by Blake Crouch obviously I think this one is probably more of a thriller like dark I don't know like creepy thriller because it doesn't sound very sci-fi-ish but I'm still really really intrigued by it so yeah, these are the two that I will be reading at some point. And like I said, I know he's written so many more, but for once I was sensible and didn't just buy loads of them. I will probably buy more of his once I've read these two, because I've got the two. Might as well read them. Okay, next one in the stack is actually Frida McFadden books. And I've got quite a few. So, <laughs> I know, um, I've got Housemaid and I also have the sequel and the third book in a series as well, but they're on the top of the shelf because that's where I keep my sequels of the books I can't get to at the minute. I have read three books by her. Two of them were on Kindle, by the way, so I'll show you the ones I read first. The very first book I read by her was Do You Remember? Sorry for the Reflections. That was just so fast-paced. I gave it four stars. It was really fast-paced and I just couldn't put the book down. She read thrillers, by the way, if you didn't know. Then my second one by her was The X, and that one I gave five stars to. It was unexpected. I think I got it for like a pound or it was free with Prime Reading or something like that. I was pleasantly surprised by this one. Absolutely loved it. Absolutely fell in love with it. In fact, I don't remember in which order I read them. And then I also read Never Lie, which I gave four stars to. But then I went on a bit of a rampage and bought a load of her books because they were they were on good offer in the works which is a like discount shop in the uk and i just bought a bunch of them like i said it was much cheaper than buying them in any other shop so i just got 
the load here and I will continue buying her stuff because her books are so addictive that's what I really like about them they're just so addictive and the twists that happen I don't expect them she's good at like throwing red herrings every now and then so you think you know what what's gonna happen but then it doesn't happen so it's completely compelling fast-paced easy to get into and if you're in the reading slump those are really good to get into and get you out of the reading slump that's why I like them I didn't tell you what I like about the black Blake Crouch books though I really like that they are very like sci-fi I do enjoy sci-fi and mind-blowing in quite a few cases absolutely mind-blowing again also page turners captivating his imagination is really really impressive i would say and the concept of his books always sound really good and there's a little bit of a creepy element to them as well in a way which i also appreciate so yeah but let me show you the books that i've got by this author like one by one so yeah like i said i've got the housemaid and the second and third books in the series and i've got the inmate the locked door i also have the perfect son the teacher one by one and the co-worker so I'm looking forward to reading them all at some point because I know she, I know for a fact she, her one of her books is definitely going to be a four or five star for me and I know for sure that when I'm just over halfway through or have like 100 pages left or something I need to leave some time take some time aside because I know I won't be able to put these books down they are unput downable my next one is actually a fantasy author and I haven't got many physical books by her, but the ones that I do have are these three. So I've got here The Shadows Between Us, which I have read and gave it five stars. I absolutely loved it, even though it was a little bit unexpected. I love the romance. I love the sassy main character, sassy female characters that are really confident and funny and her books are really lighthearted and a really easy plot. They're just really good, lighthearted fun books and like I said I love the main characters always and the romantic elements romantic interest in them also I feel the chemistry every time in her books and I also listen to audiobooks of Daughter of the Pirate King and Daughter of the Siren Queen loved those books absolutely loved them I can't remember who was the narrator but the narrator did such a good job it was fantastic I absolutely loved it and I do want to buy the physical copies of them at some point because uh, you might want to reread them at some point in physical format. My cat is playing with the curtains because of course he is. And the other two that I've got by the author that I that are on my TBR are these two. So Vengeance of the Pirate Queen which I think is a separate thing from Daughter of the Pirate King I think because by the blurb it sounds I think like completely different characters. It's been years since I listened to the audiobooks but I also have Warrior of the Wild and I do want I think there was another one that I nearly bought unless I just forgot and it's somewhere on my shelves I can't remember the name of it that's helpful but yes so I think she's definitely an autobiography for me because her books are so light-hearted and humorous and I do enjoy the plot they're really easy to read they're like really light sort of fantasy not your high stakes but with really sassy female characters next author I'd say she writes different sort of books but so the books that I have read so is this author Catherine Arden these are the books that I own by her I have read The Bear and the Nightingale but it was years ago now so I do have the second one on my TBR which is again at the top of the shelf but because I don't remember much from this book I want to reread this one before I go into the second one and then eventually I'll buy the third one because her writing style at least in the adult books is beautiful very atmospheric and it's just so immersive and I also read her quartet I think middle grade horror I think it is uh small spaces so we're starting with small spaces then dead voices dark waters and empty smiles and I gave the first two I think maybe the first three I think I gave four stars this one was a disappointment I did give it two stars but I still love the atmosphere of these books and the creepy side of it. So if she ever writes any more middle grade horror, I'm definitely up for that. I will definitely buy them and eat them up. 
and another book I've got by her on my TBR by the way I have not read it yet and it's the most recent release of her and that is Warm Hands of Ghosts it's a beautiful cover and I've got Waterstones sprayed edges and it's a signed edition by the way it's really pretty on the inside as well but this one I think is like historical fiction if not historical fantasy there we go so um, once I've reread this one and read the second and third books in the trilogy, I will have caught up with all of her books that are currently out, by the way. And yeah, like I said, I just love, I also like the fact that she's starting to dip her toes in different genres as well. But I'm pretty sure I've heard great, great, good things about this book because apparently it's really atmospheric and beautiful. So that's what I do love about her books and her writing style is absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, my next one is slightly similar-ish vibes with the previous one, but the books I owned by this author are these ones, and the author is C.J. Cook. So I've got a slightly funny story with it. I listened to the audiobook of um, The Lighthouse Witches, and I really enjoyed it. I wanted it in a physical format at some point, but I haven't got to it yet. And then I was halfway through listening to The Nesting, but it just happened to fall into the point where I stopped enjoying audiobooks because I just sometimes go on and off of them. So now I don't re listen to them constantly. It wasn't the fault with the book at all. I just really couldn't be bothered to listen to an audiobook. So I stopped listening to it, but I kept thinking about the book and the characters. So I bought the physical copy with the intention of one day reading the full thing. Just based on a book and a half, I then bought these books. I know that she's got a few more, but I think this one is one of her first published books, The Blame Game. I think it's a thriller, by the way, whilst these ones are more of a, on like a creepy gothic, gothic story almost side. On my TBR now, I obviously have The Nesting, like I've shown you before. I need to read that. Then I've got The Ghost Woods. Then I've got A Haunting in the Arctic which is a really pretty cover. And the most recent release is The Book of Witching. I even pre-ordered it. That's the book I was referring to, but I don't have it in physical format. I am just, I love her writing style, the atmosphere and the plot. It's a little bit creepy. It's a little bit like unsettling almost, but it's cozy and I enjoy the characters. I enjoy how the story seemed to be going, at least in one and a half books. And all of the premises that the author has written so far, they genuinely all sound really interesting. So every time I just keep buying more and more books, even though I don't read them, even though I need to, and I've got the full intention of doing that. But yeah, also, can I just say, it's the same author, same publishing company. Why is the latest book so much taller than these ones? They just do not match. Why? Why do that? I can't put them together on my shelf so annoying also i don't know if that would bother some people that some in some cases i've got paperbacks of books some have got hardbacks i do try to match them but it's not always possible sometimes it's just convenience or i can't find them or can't be bothered or it's just there in front of me and i want it there and then but yes <laughs> i'm looking forward to reading these four there's just something about her books that always is going to draw draw me to them and I do really need to get to them, so hopefully soon I'll get to the nesting and then continue with the rest of them. Next one, again, is slightly similar, but slightly different, but it's uh, this author, well, Elizabeth McNeil. I really liked... So, basically, I loved The Doll Factory when I read it. It was a five-star book, and I'm pretty sure it was my favourite book of the year. 2019, I think, maybe? And then I went to her event when she was talking about uh, her next book, which was, which I'll show you in a minute. But that's where I got the paperback, which is signed by her, because I just thought at the event, sort of buy it, because why not? And the event was in Bath, in Mr. B's Emporium bookshop. I really liked listening to her talk about her books. This was an absolutely fantastic book. Not gonna lie though, her second one, Circus of Wonders, was a bit of a disappointment for me. But I think it's just personal preference because I don't like circus settings and I know I should have not been anticipating loving it because like I said, if I don't enjoy the setting, 
I'm less likely to enjoy it. I still think gave it three stars because I still love the atmosphere and the characters and the plot and the storytelling. It's just the setting didn't work for me. And her latest release, and pretty much I think I started it almost immediately after I got it, and that is The Burial Plot. I absolutely love the cover of this book. It's absolutely stunning. And I'm pretty sure I read it quite quickly. I think I gave it four stars though. Really pretty on the inside. But I really did enjoy it. So she's definitely going to be the author that I will be buying anything she ever writes. But unfortunately she doesn't write books very often, which is a shame. But again, I really love the atmosphere of her books. Really like it. I love the characters. I like the creepy bad characters of her books as well. They seem to be in every single one of them. There's a bad male character who is almost like bringing the female character to a disaster, ruins her life in one way or another. But they're just so good, such good books. I do enjoy them very much. There's something about them, the feeling of them. I don't know how to describe it, what I like about them. But yeah, the, the writing style is absolutely gorgeous as well. That's what I think I prefer. That's, I think that's what I love about the, these the most, the writing and the atmosphere. And the plot as well is really good, apart from maybe the second one. But oh well, she's still my autobi author. My next author is a more of a historical fiction, I want to say, but that is Stacey Halls. So I started my journey with her from the familiars. I did only give it four stars. But I just remember at some point about halfway through I realised how the, the main character and the story in general sort of grew on me and I still remember the book so it's like a witchy-ish historical fiction not really that witchy it's um don't like quote the saying this is a very witchy book it's got something to do with witches but not to a lot of like magic or whatever then I read The Foundling by her and also really enjoyed it. I think I gave it four stars? Or was it five? I can't remember. It was a few years ago but I read it and again this is a signed edition. So yes, these two were really good and the two that I've got on my TBR are Mrs England and I'm pretty sure I even pre-ordered it and this book came out in 2021. <laughs> So I really should read this one. I'm really looking forward to it though. I don't know why I haven't read it yet. I thought about reading it a few times but just haven't got to it at all unfortunately. And I also have The Household by her which is the most recent edition. Um, I think it, was, it came out this year. Again sort of historical fiction. Again though it's the same publisher company so why make one of them much taller than the other one? I don't get it. They don't match. <laughs> Even though I know I've got a heap of back of one anyway. But yes, her books, again, I would say they're really atmospheric. I like her writing style. They're sort of easy to get to as well. Like, that, there's nothing really that... It's not, not, it's not difficult to read them. And I love this historical setting. I like the main characters. I like the friendships within at least the first two books that I read that the main characters create and I just like them a lot and generally the plots like the blurbs of the books in general sound always really good to me so I'm always going to be buying books by this author her writing style is beautiful her characters are really good the relationships between the characters and the actual plot is always really fascinating and good and interesting to follow through so yeah okay I've only got four more authors to talk about continuing the vibe of like historic, creepy historical fiction. I've got Laura Purcell's books as well. And I think I own everything by her that is out so far, as well as, by the way, with Stacey Halls and Elizabeth McNeil. But I've got everything that Laura Purcell has ever written, I believe, as well. Actually, now I'm not sure. I think she wrote some historical fiction or even non-fiction. I can't remember. I'll need to check it out before I say it. But my journey with Laura Purcell started with actually an audiobook of The Silent Companions. But then I bought the physical copy because I loved that book so much. I gave it five stars. It was so creepy and atmospheric and the writing was absolutely beautiful. And then I got the core set as well. 
which I did give four stars to, but it was again really good. And again, the writing style, the atmosphere, the creepy elements, that's what I love about her books. Creepy, historical fiction setting, a little bit gothic even, and the plots. I would say there's always like a good twist in them as well, so you don't expect it. And it always has like a dark turn, or maybe even darker turn than you expect. The writing style is absolutely gorgeous and it's always strong female leads as well I would say. Then I read Bone China by her which was my least favourite book of hers so far. I think I gave it only three stars. I don't know if I ever reread it and if I feel different about it but it was my least favourite. And then I gave this one The Shape of Darkness five stars. It was absolutely beautiful. It was also set in Bath and I love Bath so that was quite close to home. And again, it was creepy, creepy atmosphere, beautiful writing, beautiful plot, and again, unexpected twists. And now I've got two books on my TBR from her. So I've got The Whispering Muse, which is a signed edition. I don't know if you can hear my cat purring, but he's purring behind me. So yes, there is this beautiful edition that I obviously haven't read, even though I pre-ordered it. And this book came out in 2023 actually so not that long ago comparing to some other books but I also have her most recent um, release which is Runestone which is I think her debut in YA and I think this might be like a retelling I'm not 100% sure I haven't seen great reviews though but I'm hoping her writing style and atmosphere will save her for me personally but we'll see how it goes but I'm still excited about these two I'll get to them at some point. Then I've got um, two authors that write crime books. One of them is Holly Jackson. I'm missing one book because I unhauled it. So my journey with her started with the Good Girls Guide to Murder series. This one I gave four stars to. This one I also gave four stars to. This one I gave absolutely five stars. It was my favorite book of a couple of years ago, maybe last year, I can't remember. But this was absolutely fantastic, I thought. It was so detailed and so just captivating. And then I also read Killjoy, which is the prequel to it, which I also gave five stars. I'm not usually in two short books, but this was just good. I got so immersed into it that I kept forgetting that they were just playing a fake sort of, that it was a game and not real life stuff. And then I read the reappearance of Rachel Price, which is a massive letdown for me. I really was so disappointed in it that I had to unhaul it, even though I pre-ordered it and it was just a disappointment. But then I read Five Survive, which actually pleasantly surprised me and I have faith in Holly Jackson again. This was really good. I gave it four stars and I loved the setting. I loved the atmosphere. I just loved it. It was really, it wasn't like, fast-paced thrillery sort of book it was more the relationships between the characters on this RV and the unsettling sort of obviously setting and I just had a good time I love her books mostly apart from one I don't really know I can't really say with her why I like her books so much but this one was just absolutely fantastic full of detail and twists as well and this one was just really interesting so I wouldn't say she's like my favorite author but I would say she's an autobiography author and I know she's got another one coming out I think next year like an adult crime book again don't know what to think about it but I'm definitely gonna get it so see that just proves the point that she's an autobiography author for me and then my second crime author is Kara Hunter I love her books so I've read everything by her so far and I own everything by her but the series this is all part of the same series it's the D.I. Adam Foley series I absolutely love it I think there are a couple that I gave five stars to but most of them are four stars which I know doesn't sound like a high rating for my autobiography author but I just love her books I don't know if I need to show them all to you one by one probably not <laughs> but anyway you can see all of the titles here and I had such a good time with it I love how they're really gripping and really sorry my cat is literally just staring at me <laughs> and purring at the same time 
So yes, I like that the chapters are really short and it's just really moves from like one scene to another and we've got different perspectives but it doesn't take away from the story at all it adds to it if anything so it's really fascinating and really really easy to get into and really quite easy like page turners i would say and unexpected twists happen all the time even though you think you know what's gonna happen you really don't and he's literally staring at me do you want to say hi here we go Anyways, I would absolutely continue with the series whenever the next one is published because I think currently that's that's it so far. I know she's writing another one in the series and I'm so looking forward to it. They're just so great. Such great books. Such good, um, really close police procedural as well. Like really realistic police procedural, I would say, which I love about it, which is what the series is. And then also a completely separate book from it all is Murder in the Family. This is like mixed media-ish type of thing. I did give it four stars, it wasn't my favourite, but it was still really good and I would absolutely buy anything she ever writes. And the last author, finally, is T. Kingfisher. So I would definitely say that about her horror books. I haven't read her dark fantasy books because I know she writes horror and um, dark fantasy, but I have read three of her books so far. I own a few more. So it started with The Hollow Places, which I gave five stars to. It was absolutely amazing. It was, the atmosphere was perfect. It was creepy, but it was also like lighthearted in some ways. There's humor and it felt cozy and it felt so imaginative. I just absolutely loved this book. Absolutely loved it. Then I read The Twisted Ones, which I, I think I gave it 3.5 stars, but I think I'm thinking back on it. I still think on about this book quite often so it's the one that's stuck in my mind a lot and I think it deserves a four star. It's just I remember there's one bit in the middle of the book that really took away from the story and just took me out of it and I just didn't like that at all. And I then also read What Moves the Dead, I gave it four stars as well and I want the sequel but in paperback so that they match. So that's the horror that I have read by her. I also have horror that I haven't read by her, I think it's horror, A House With Good Bones. I want to read it this month in October or November because it just feels weird to not read a book by her this, like, in, at this sort of time. So I'm really looking forward to this one as well. Like I said, her books are just atmospheric, creepy, unsettling and just good plot as well. I also have Nettle and Bone by her, which is a dark fantasy, and I also have a couple of Kindle books by her, let me show you. So I've got The Seventh Bride by her, I think it's a dark fantasy, and I also have Thorn Hedge by her as well, which is a really pretty cover. So there are a few that I want to still get, but I think I need to try one of her dark fantasies and then decide if I want more of those. But definitely the horror ones is the ones I would definitely ought to buy, so that's why I can say she's my autobuy author. But I will have to check on the fantasy side as well, which is, I will do at some point. So yes, it feels like it was such a long video, but I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.